Hello, this is Peter Cunningham. I'm going to talk you through creating a database query in Microsoft Access for loading historical or well test data into future. I'm illustrating this with Access, although it is true that uh, quite often your production data may be in another form of uh, database. Um, but if, if that is, if it's an SQL, if, if the data is held in SQL Server or Oracle, this will serve as a get to give a quick overview for uh, the people who will be handling those databases. And in any case, they will not typically be uh, database uh, people who you know will know better than I do the details of creating uh, queries in in their database platform. Okay, so this is illustrating it for a production database in, in Access. Okay. When you come to future, your model uses historical and well test data. And in order to do that, the future database loads, uh, needs to have loaded into it uh, the relevant historical and well test data. The database stores it as each of these as separate um, standalone uh, sort of pseudo files that are called specters. The, for your particular model, once you've loaded it, you can choose uh, which, which specter to use in your model under model settings, which is accessed from file settings for current model. So that's uh, there and there. But in any case, the first step is to import uh, the, pr the profile and the historical data and well test data. And that is done through the options import. And what's particularly relevant to us now is that in these dialogues, you'll see highlighted here the information about what needs to be contained in the database query. So when you load that, you point to the database that contains the uh, 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 the, the contains the, um, the the query, and then you give the name of the query here. Okay, so here we've got a listing of the data format: well, OFM date, oil, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When we come to the database itself, this is a typical OFM database, we'll find that their, uh, the data is held in a series of tables. And quite often, the, the table will be pretty close to the format you require. Here, we've got um, monthly data. And so this starts applies for this data is for the month starting at that date and these are the total amounts of oil and gas and water etc during the month however it's not possible to use this particular thing directly for example future looks for a column called total gas um, which is this produced gas plus the gas uh, the the injection gas so we have to create a, a suitable query. Uh, creating one in Excel is very straightforward. You go under create, and then it's best to start with query design. You choose the relevant table, or you may, uh, in more complicated queries, you may have to choose uh, several tables, and then we add the relevant fields. The order is not important. Uh, the database code can work out from that. But if we go back to we'll see that the format we want is well uh, OFM date. 
and then a column called oil, a column called total gas. So we can start creating these columns. Here we've got, we indeed have a column called well, we've got a date column but we need to rename it and the format for doing that is, uh, the syntax for that is type in the desired name and then a colon. Um, oil stands and then we want a column called uh, total gas and here we want to have an expression and that's most easily done using the builder option. So here we can look up gas plus gas lift. Assuming of course that the OFM column gas means produced gas. May need a little bit of manual editing as well. Let's just check. Okay. When you've defined it, when you've defined your query, you can view it in different formats. This is a sort of query designer, but you can also view it as the actual data starting to look sensible or you can view it the actual SQL statement behind it which is useful for QCing the more complicated uh, queries. When you've done your uh, work if you try to close it you'll get prompted and you can save it under a suitable name. To illustrate some um, points about uh, how to handle unit uh, conversions, I'd like to move on to an, an, a previously created uh, uh, query. So here I'm swapping to view queries and I've got a query defined with the default uh, future name that. Imagine the situation that although your PRD table containing the data had a column called oil, it was in metric units and so you wanted to modify your, uh, your query so that you've got a multiplier. Reasonably straightforward, all you have to do is use the expressions, but there is a complication with the fact that your output column is oil is going to have the same name as your input column oil. So you have to take care to qual uh, qualify the name suitably. If we move to um, here, just do it straightforwardly. So if we go to builder and call it uh, oil and say this is going to be oil, the, the column star 6.281. The, the, the access syntax is smart enough to realize that the second oil is a column name, so it's been given the square brackets for, for that. But if we come to run it, we'll get this sort of error. The answer to that is to put the qualifier in front of this saying that it comes from the table. And the syntax for that is these square brackets with the exclamation mark. So one can copy those, put that in front, and now we should find our multiplier delivers us, us an output column of the same name as the input column. And if we view that in 
SQL syntax, we'll see the corresponding expression there. And of course, you can directly edit the, the, the SQL statement as well. So when we're happy with that, uh, if we close it again, we'll get prompted uh, to, to save the changes. So in this particular case, I'm not going to, but normally, of course, you would. And then when you've done that, you can close it. Now, one point to note is that if you want, if, if it's a, an access MDB file and you want to read it, you need to use the 32-bit version of Future for that. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for your time. Cheers.